I see a lot of clapping hands and, and Arthur has a question. Please go, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate quickly on that study with the um, with the mapping of the of the uh, single cell sequencing data. Yes. And, uh, so you've got. Uh, let me try to think it through <laughs> with you. Maybe I just got it wrong. So you've got mild cases. Uh, you've got severe cases. You've got. Uh, you've got uh, uninfected people, healthy people. Uh, yes, and let's go with that. You're trying to, uh, so your ideal scenario of, of the clustering yes. is when all cell types map to, to the specific cell, or when all the clusters map to specific cell types. Why right. would you expect not to have a population or subpopulations with different expressions of immune cells, let's say, for example, between the groups uh, of mild and severe, and uh, within the patients themselves, surely they could the way the immune system works, it works with clones uh, of cells, so they could easily have within the same cell type different patterns of expression. So could you maybe absolutely that? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. So there are two things. So first of all, uh, sorry if I'm going back and forth. So I, I call this the ideal situation, but it's. Uh, uh, not not possible like it's completely unreliable especially considering single cell data because single cell data is a continuum so you you have cells that maybe maybe they are of the same cell types and they are like labeled as the same cell type uh, but they are in different stages of development so i mean especially like cells. especially immune cells so like pretending that uh, i mean i i'm going to find like a cluster that is all t cell this doesn't make sense but, uh, but this is like just to, just to say, okay, I have 20 labels, so 20 is here. Is here. So what I want to, to do instead of like defining like thousands of classes, because they are very heterogeneous, like at least I want to get closer <laughs> to, you know, to have the less number of, uh, of classes as possible, because the less, I, the less classes I have, the more interpretable uh, uh, those are, I guess, this is an assumption, but maybe um, maybe also like you know the extreme case of uh, you know thousands of uh, different heterogeneous classes is um, interesting as well um, so this, this is about you know th this this is about this line uh, down here and then uh, about the uh, like for instance imagine that I find here that the the cells that are more discriminative between uh, uh, severe and mild, for instance, are, are epithelial cells of a certain class. Now, those, it, this doesn't mean that those are all the epithelial cells that I find in the experiment. This is a subset of epithelial cells. You know, then there will be other epithelial cells <laughs> that, uh, that, that, that are not so discriminative. But this particular class, that is this cluster of clusters of epithelial cells, um, seems to be more discriminative than the others. And, the, and this, I think that is very interesting because it's like also finding like, yeah, like kinds of subtypes or maybe like subclasses or inside one label uh, that seems to be, uh, um, seems to drive some signal, no? Uh, for distinguishing between the, the classes. Understood. I'm, I'm wondering if it would make sense to, to sort of, map the uh, hypothesis based question knowing that i mean given that you've got the expression data here also ask a question uh what about the 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 you know regular suspects and uh what if is do you see for example in your clustering approach certain things that you expect to be upregulated Ah, yeah 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 so exactly so the next i, I don't have the slide but basically the next steps is uh, um, to look at the genes, like you know, exactly. find the genes that are uh, that are enriched, especially in those classes of uh, of cells. Yes, uh, we, we we are not there <laughs> yet, but uh, but it's the next step. Yes. Okay. I guess I guess that's that. I, that was like a very uh, unsatisfactory ending of the story for me, and I was wondering. Well, yes. <laughs> what, what, what we are surely, <laughs> surely. What we are doing right now is like to trying to find. 
like for instance imagine that i, I mean as i said before like uh, an epithelial uh, groups of uh, um, a group of epithelial cell is uh, uh, discriminating between severe and non-severe so what we are doing now is like to look for each gene the distributions in those uh, uh, of, the, of the expression of those genes in this class in the two phenotypes and uh, and compute some kind of uh, i don't know like uh, some kind of uh, fx size some kind of distance in order to see which are the ones that are more um discriminative right and so we can rank them and we can uh, and we can like uh, you know yes i mean uh, pick the ones that uh, that are more uh, that that have more extreme values let's let's see what comes out because uh, as you said maybe maybe the the, the, the usual suspects suspects right like the ones that are maybe you know, just hyperactivate. I, I don't know. I don't know what uh, what to expect. So we, yeah. we, this is uh, this is ongoing. Very exciting. I'm looking forward to see what comes out of it. Yeah, because uh, uh, otherwise you you left me a little bit with a with a very expensive way to do cell typing. <laughs> that was probably not the, not the initial idea. Thank you very much. So the, the the labels of the cells, just to clarify, are taken from Seurat. Uh, the you know the typical. Uh, uh, um, labeling of the cell but we also compare the results with uh, uh, the cell ontology so there is a way of uh, you know using cell ontology for labeling the the, the 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 data so we are also comparing like the two approaches so like the, everything is there are a multiplicity of configurations of different uh, you know parameters uh, and we are exploring all of them uh, so good. yeah thanks very much looking forward to see what comes out of it thank you Tiltan. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. I'm I'm interested in the last part when you okay. show this, uh, this graphical database. Uh, yeah. The, um, okay. Yes. The, the flow maps. Part, I yeah. think it's uh, sorry. Can you show the distress API and? I'm knowing that. Okay. Here. So, so we have also this this kind of uh, setup and technology at Casus. Okay. Um, and my, 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 my question is like for the next slide. So we have also dashboard with forecast result. And also we created like federative database, uh, okay. which also involved the, the COVID cases from, from all of uh, area of, of Germany and also Czech, Czechia and Poland. Hmm. What I like to, to know more is about uh, your, your next slide. And yes, next again. So when you create this, uh, graphical database and then your next i think next again sorry <laughs> no, nothing no worries yeah here so at, at first you, you, uh, this this position of uh this this point you take from the geometry of the let's say in no, count count county or no no no, no. so the, the, this this how do you decide this the the position uh, the, the position is uh, is just like you know a layout of uh so it's not like taking from the uh no, no, no. So Barcelona is not here in the center of Spain. So no, no, no. They, these are not reflecting uh, um, the actual geographic uh, geographic location of the of the provinces. Yeah. We can we we thought of studying this also from this point of view. Like maybe yeah. like it's interesting to see like the, the the graph, like how it's actually because you know what the, 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 there are some uh, some things that are really interesting in terms of the mobility. For instance, the highway and and some uh, you know um like you know roads where you have to pass if you want to go from one place to the other which are going to be much more traveled and so uh, in order to make this kind of studies on uh, on the actual uh, geolocalization of, of of events no why that I try, try to give an explanation based on geography mm. so in that case yes what you say it's it's correct we, we should like you know be um coherent with uh, with the geolocalization but here it's it's in general. Here it's uh, it's just you know like connecting the nodes and uh, and then create an embedding of this uh, uh, of those nodes based on the on their. Um... Because at the moment we 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 have like uh, built with kind of the correlation like per perfect perfect correlation, and then we really represent as a geometrical things. And okay. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Like if I. Like, uh, like, but this is in preparation, right? The, the paper is not coming out. The, the paper, the paper is not uh, is not coming out. But this one, uh, it's uh, it's actually uh, published, and uh, and there is like you know a more, let's say, analytical section of of the paper, uh, which goes a bit more into into some some. If I, if I remember right, it goes more into some example on specific 
locations and, 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 and the last question is the data yeah. the data version is limited to 2021 or up to date until uh, no it has been updated uh, it has been updated until so, I mean, like okay. after after the publication after the publication uh, we kept updating yes, it yeah, okay, then. but up to a certain point i don't remember how many months yeah 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 i understand that so, yeah for for us also we we synchronize uh, every day with with Robert Koch Institute and yeah. many, many many sources in in Germany, Czechia, and Poland. That's uh, yeah. scientific data. I write it. Sorry. Yeah, sure, sure. I can send you the, the you know the references. Could you could you write in the text? Yeah, sure. All right. Thank you very much. Further questions? If not, I have a few questions and comments. So, so first of all, of course, I, I strongly encourage everybody to, to reach out to Davide whenever he yes. or she uh, has any interesting overlap. And I guess there are a lot. Uh, one comment thereby is also related to, to Janina. And I mean, what, what I saw from, from methodology point of view is that of course, a lot of hyperparameter or parameter searches hmm. Are, are somehow needed, right? To make the right analysis for getting the right communities or for getting the right parameters, which then yeah. class best and things like that. Yeah. So what I would be curious about and, and, and also would encourage Janina, for instance, to, to consider that as use cases for, for optimization algorithms we, we develop, which in best case, of course, makes your computations performing better, mm. right? And gives us nice use cases for, for, for applying such, such algorithms. So, I mean, very interesting. Yeah. Also, Davide, thank you for your talk. It was very good, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, but for, for this specific uh, issue, let's say we, we may schedule a separate meeting on that. It would be very interesting to, to just look where are, let's say, instances uh, which are reachable by, by, by the algorithms, especially Janina develops, and how mm. we may can do this together. This would be nice. So, this is. The one comment I have, more or less. The other comment I would would ask is, so as you as you showed also in the uh, these community things with the uh, yes. increasing uh, uh, resolution. The resolution, yeah. So so this is somehow a similar concept uh, to to so called persistent homology. I, I don't know whether you use it or know it or, or somehow uh, apply it somewhere. Yes, no, I, I, we haven't applied, but I have, uh, you know, some some knowledge about that. I, I, I know what is uh, what what we are referring to, but it's uh, it's it's correct, right? It's kind of yeah, it's true. There is actually a a very it's it's somehow a, a measure of connectivity in a certain sense, and yeah. on a topological structure which preserves if you increase or decrease resolution depending on how you yeah. set it up. And um, okay. Which I mean, which, which uh, it's it, it's true, and it it would would also make like more general uh, all this uh, all this approach because now I'm talking about resolution and I'm talking about modularity because this is the the, the function that is used in the Louvain algorithm. Basically, what we are doing is a multi-layer network um, version of the Louvain algorithm, and and the, the Louvain algorithm has this. Parameter. So this is why we are using uh, resolution, and then we observe this phenomenon. But you are right; like it, the, the same thing can be thought in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, exactly like uh, persistent homology, and uh, and maybe this can be can be explored. I don't know how much can can it, can be done in terms of like multi-layer network persistence, <laughs> you know, something like that. I have a little little. Question for for made, made the, the, as you showed the, the mammoth which you wanted then to to yes. um, compress to to do two D. Do you have also higher dimensional data sets like that where you not only from three D to two D, but um, I mean so so you can you can of course nicely embed any graph into three D and then yeah so huh. at least a graph without edge cutting uh, crossings and things like that. So my question is just because there's so Chetan, uh, who's in the, in the lab, exactly uh, plays around with these autoencoder re-embeddings and topological okay. analysis of that. Yep. And um, so it would be interesting to have some 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 cases there where we may may compare to how they are called UMAP and all the other other. Approaches. Yes, yes, yes. Those are okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this I, I will put in the in the chat also this uh, this reference. It's it's really nice because they. 
So th th there is this pack map uh, uh, approach, and uh, this is from uh, Cynthia Rudin. She works in um, she works in uh, Duke uh, University, and uh, and I mean, yes. she, okay. She, and uh, so, so here, right? yes. the, paper, the paper is here and they compare you know their method with all the others and okay. um so we, which can be interesting for you like to have you know this kind of benchmark you know to a methodological benchmark for for your for your um, um approaches but uh, i think that it's uh, in terms of use case like in terms of data uh, yes of course we have like a lot of networks multi-layer networks that we can embed somehow in uh, in uh, in different dimensions and and then we have like molecular data like this can be this uh, single cell data sets uh, it can be other type of data sets um we use yeah i mean we, we have a lot of data that we can uh, that we can really use for for these purposes um even even biometric data for instance we we are working a lot uh, uh, right now with uh, electrocardiograms which is you know completely different types of data but maybe it can be interesting to explore as well so if you're looking for for data sets and and for like possible use cases i think that it's uh, uh it, i mean we can definitely like use or reuse uh, the data that we have in house very good Okay, so so that uh, satisfies me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you enjoyed for, for presenting and, and uh, thanks a lot for, for dropping by. And um, of course, I hope we, we, we continue and, and, and uh, looking forward to, to go further on, on some of the projects. And okay. um, with that, I once again say thanks to David and thanks to all the others.